Good morning, dear friends. Sri Aurobindo Complex Trust extends a very warm welcome to all of you present here and also those present online. On the auspicious occasion of New Year Day and Founders Day, this day we also remember our beloved founder, Sri Ji, who founded this institute, Sri Aurobindo Complex Trust and Mirambika School for New Age. We wish everyone here a very healthy, happy, and a prosperous new year. And further welcome Sri Shashidhar Chikka here to give a talk on Sri Aurobindo and Avatar and the Kalki. Sri Aurobindo Complex Trust is conducting a plethora of activities as part of the 50th birth anniversary celebrations of Sri Aurobindo like satsang, cultural programs, publication of books, webinars, exhibitions, etc. To know more about Sri Aurobindo and the Mother, one can subscribe to become a member of Sri Aurobindo Society, Puducherry, and get a colorful monthly All India magazine filled with the mantric words of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Sri Aurobindo Complex Trust also houses Mirambika School for New Age, a full-fledged CBSC school from baby nursery to 10th standard, a beautiful guest house, Matru Chaya, a magnificent meditation hall, the home to Sri Aurobindo's sacred relics, a well-stocked library, and an audiovisual hall for films, workshops, Sri Ranga, a beautiful open air theater for regular cultural programs. This beautiful cultural come exhibition hall with the living presence of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. The managing trustee of Sri Aurobindo Complex Trust is Dr. Ajit Sabnis, also the chairman for Mirambika School for New Age, executive and core committee member, Sri Aurobindo Society, Puducherry. Sri Aurobindo Complex Trust is also the Karnataka state's headquarters with about 34 active Sri Aurobindo Society branches and centers. Kannada, Akhila Bharti Patrike is published and distributed from here. To know more about us, please visit our website, sriarabindocomplex.org. We have put up an exhibition today, fresh exhibition, Flowers in the Clock of Nature. People can have a look there. The message for today, dear all, bow and a happy new year. A card containing the following message from the mother was distributed in Sri Aurobindo Society on 1st January 20. 23. The world is fighting for its spiritual life, menaced by the rush of hostile and undivine forces. Lord, we aspire to be thy valiant warriors so that thy glory may manifest upon the earth, the mother. A brief introduction of Sri Shashidhar Chikka, the speaker for today. An architect, urban planner, an independent Indology researcher, and a devotee of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. Apart from his architecture profession, he is passionate in the study of Indology and is keen to understand the relation between science and spirituality through archaeology, iconography, linguistics, and itihasas. His major work is towards unraveling the mysteries of the prehistoric ancient world. He is currently working on Indus Valley Civilization, Harappan Civilization, to identify the homeland of Harappans, which probably put an end to the Aryan Dravidian divide. His study travel within India and abroad has helped him to understand the cultural diversity with their probable linkages, bringing out evidences for projecting a big picture of the human civilizational evolution and provide a unifying 
world view. With these few words, I hand over the session to Shashi Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, very happy new year, 2023. It's a great honor to be a part of this uh, discussion about Sri Arvindan and Avatar and the Kalki. I thank uh, Sri Arvindan Complex Trust so for providing an opportunity to throw a few words in the light of Sri Aurobindo and the research what I've been doing. So to start with, so today's message what we have received uh, is very appropriate for the topic that we say is the world is fighting for its spiritual life managed by the rush of hostile and undivine forces. Lord, we aspire to be thy valiant warriors so that thy glory may manifest upon the earth. So this is very suitable and appropriate to understand the avatar and the Kalki. The, the word Kalki excites quite a few because there has been a continuous search for who is the Kalki. So in this presentation, we would study what Sri Aurobindo and Mother have spoken about the avatar and whether, we have, whether they have in any subtle way expressed themselves as an avatar or anything relating to Kalki and what other people have been speaking about the avatars. Firstly, let us, uh, we all know who Sri Aurobindo is, but just to reiterate, Sri Aurobindo was an Indian philosopher, a yogi, a seer, Maharishi, a poet, and a nationalist who propounded a philosophy of divine life on earth through spiritual evolution. Born on 15th August, 1872 in Calcutta, Sri Aurobindo went to, uh, did his studies in various parts of the world, in London particularly. So, studying various languages, Greek, Latin, and many other languages. So, this is a small brief about who uh, write up about Sri Aurobindo. In Pondicherry, Sri Aurobindo devoted a major part of his life to the development of his integral yoga with an aim of a fulfilled and spiritual transformed life on earth. That was the aim of Sri Aurobindo. In Pondicherry, he founded a community of spiritual seekers, which took shape as the Sri Aurobindo Ashram in 1926. He believed that the basic principles of matter, life and mind would be succeeded through terrestrial evolution by the principle of super mind as an intermediate power between the two spheres of the infinite and the finite. He devoted major part of his life to the development of integral yoga. Sri Aurobindo's aim was to spiritually 
transform the life on earth. So this, this is a very key word which we have to remember in the due course of the presentation. Transform the life on earth. He focused on the divine destiny of humankind, unification of the human race, the spirit and the significance of the Indian civilization and culture. Later, he mentioned these articles in the life divine. Gathering into yoga, the essential elements of spiritual experience that are gained by the paths of the divine commune and spiritual realization. Sri Arbindo Sadhana was in search of a more complete experience, uniting and harmonizing the two ends of existence, that is spirit and matter. Most ways of yogas are paths to the beyond, leading to the spirit, and in the end, away from life. But Sri Aurobindo's rises to the spirit to redescend with its gain, bringing the light and the power and bliss of the spirit into life to transform it. This is the very important point which has to be noted. Sri Aurobindo rises to the spirit to redescend with its gains, bringing the light and the power and bliss of the spirit into life to transform it. So the, there are two things which we need to understand uh, here. One is about the avatar, that is what Sri Aurobindo is, is uh, whether he is an avatar and who is Kalki? Is there any relation between Kalki? Kalki, as all we know, is, uh, is a Vedantic concept. So where you have, he is the la last avatar of the 10 avatars of Vishnu. So uh, how is that uh, Sri Aurobindo is being uh, linked to Kalki? Let us understand in the presentation uh, how uh, we could uh, relate these two things together. Kalki is the 10th and the last avatar of the Lord Vishnu. Dashavatara is the story of Vishnu appearing in 10 different forms as incarnations in different yugas on the earth to protect dharma. Whenever there is an extreme dharma, this is Bhagavad Purana. Therefore, as we know, there are four, Satyuga, four yugas, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapara Yuga and Kali Yuga. The current yuga is Kali Yuga as per the Hindu calendar. Kali Yuga is considered to have started in 3102 BCE after the death of Sri Krishna. It is predicted in the Puranas that Kalki will be born in the end of Kali Yuga in a place known as Shambhala. In a well-to-do Brahmin family, his parents, uh, his parents were Krishna Dhan Ghosh. So, uh, sorry, his, uh, uh, his parents were Shambhala. Sorry, this, this I think is a bit of a mistake here. So well-to-do in the Brahmin family. Kalki, the avatar of Lord Vishnu, incarnates to fight with hostile forces and elevate humanity and saves them from pralaya. So this is what Kalki does. You can see the image here, a very imposing and uh, interesting image where you see the Kalki uh, riding a horse and moving upwards, possibly in a, uh, in a very valier uh, pose. So he's fighting with the hostile forces. And this is what we have seen and is mentioned in the uh, Bhagavad Purana. So if, if you can remember this, then we can relate to what the Sadhana Sri Aurobindo is doing and whether is there any relations to this uh, image and uh, the scriptures, what it has been in saying to us. In the essence of Gita, Sri Aurobindo says, whatever one's background and approach, ultimately the only way to access Avatar's unfathomable mystery is with a true Vedantic spirit. As anything else falls short. Without it, that is, unless we interject the Vedantic consciousness that all is one, avatarhood would remain an ever elusive enigma. This is what Sri Aurobindo says. Whatever is one's background or approach, ultimately the only way to access avatars, if you have to understand avatar, so the only way is to understand 
the have, uh, mystery with, is with a truly vedantic spirit so if you have to understand the avatars it has to be connected to the vedantic spirit so that's how he himself says that it has to be linked so kalki uh, connecting kalki to the avatar and connecting to sri arbindo is very appropriate in this uh, phrase avatar indicates a primary movement not of ascent but of descent the divine descending into human body so what sri arbindo is uh, talking about is basically the evolution of consciousness and the dashavatar also is speaking about the evolution of consciousness so if we dig deep and understand the 10 avatars so they are all from starting from the matsya avatar up to the uh, krishna avatar so they are all talking about the evolution of consciousness at various stages and how life got created on this earth and how consciousness evolved in matter is what uh, has been projected in the entire dashavatara so if this has been uh, decoded through philology and we can understand that in fact that is the key essence of trying to explain how the consciousness evolved as per the vedantic concept similarly uh, shri arbindo is the last uh, avatar who is finally bringing a new age and a new race so this is the 10th avatar so the first nine has uh, adi uh, phases which have evolved and the final stage is the last avatar so as in one of the places mother says is uh, uh, there are there have been six pralayas and this will be the seventh there won't be a seventh one and a new race and age will begin so that uh, that is the uh, essence which says that uh, shri the avatar uh, shri arbindo is an avatar and as we go forward we can understand what mother says about avatar shri arbindo scored uh, i would not want to read this avatar would, would have little meaning if it were not connected with evolution this, this is a phrase by shri arbindo where he says avatar would have little meaning if it were not connected with the evolution the hindu procession of the 10 avatars is itself as it were a parable of evolution so it is he clearly says that it's a parable of evolution shri arbindo scored avatar and in, incarnation is the divine consciousness and being manifestation through the body it is possible for from any plane the avatar is necessary when a special work is to be done and in a crisis of evolution so when does an avatar uh, uh, come so an avatar is necessary when a special work is to be done and and in the crisis of evolution whether the sadhana or the work of shri arbindo is a special one is what uh, he has transformed his own body and uh, try to bring in supramental force which is actually a special work and then uh, the, he himself says the avatar is necessary when a special work is to be done and in the crisis of evolution the crisis is what we are all facing today that is uh, even in today's uh, message it is very clear and the world is fighting for its spiritual life managed by the rush of hostile uh, and divine forces today's message uh, by mother are there any other people who have written about that uh, shri arbindo is the kalki avatar amal kiran or kedi setna uh, who has been uh, heir of shri arbindo and uh, uh, who was with shri arbindo for for many years and lived for 106 years so uh, to a question uh, raised by dwarka prasad gupta the author of the book the avatar shri arbindo or sambhavami yuge yuge so he questions uh, amar kiran uh, and in the as an answer uh, he kedi setna writes shri arbindo is definitely kalki the last all fulfilling human avatar so george van rekam uh, writes there can be no doubt that shri arbindo and the mother the two in one were the kalki avatar the crucial importance of their mission and realization for the evolution in general and humanity in particular to progress from the lower to the higher hemisphere of existence and thereby to lay the foundations of the supramental world in matter is a typical task of shri kalki this is what he writes uh, poet uh, hanagi from oroville in the book avatar hood mentions i am not trying to analyze the significance of following statement in regards to shri arbindo's path and his status here but in my heart these words on their own merit and authority with which they pronounce they are pronounced seem to point him to being an avatar 
So Dwarika Prasad Gupta, uh, in his book, The Avatar Sri Arbindo, is talking about uh, uh, how he feels that uh, Sri Arbindo is a avatar. Here, these people are talking about uh, Sri Arbindo being an avatar as their experience or feeling. But uh, in my research, the key point The sequence of Shri, uh, the Dashavatara and connect the name of Shri Talki and try to evolve that Shri, uh, Shri Aurobindo is the Talki. Understanding Dashavatara from the Puranic perspective and decoding. The avatar concept is the very cornerstone of Hindu theology, Sanatana Dharma. Lord Krishna, the ninth avatar in Bhagavad Gita says, Eda Eda Hi Dharmasya Glanir Bhavati Bharata. So we know the shloka. So chapter uh, 4 of uh, Shloka 7 which uh, means as O descent of Bharat, whenever there is a decline in righteousness along with the rise of unrighteousness, then I will manifest myself for the salvation of righteousness, for the destruction of the wrongdoers and to establish righteousness. I manifest myself every yoga. This is the meaning. Whenever there is an extreme adharma, the divine will manifest as an avatar to restore dharma on the planet earth. So Western understanding, uh, what is the Western understanding? In Dashavatara, stories of Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Narsimha are zoomorphic characters and many supernatural actions performed by the characters which do not conform to the physical evolution of species on the earth and science phenomena. Hence, the story of Dashavatara and Ithyasa have been considered a myth and hence the study of these scriptures is termed as mythology. So because uh, we have uh, zoomorphic uh, characters, that is uh, Narasimha and uh, Varaha with, uh, with a lion face and a human body, a, uh, similarly uh, a boar faced and a human body, these are zoomorphic uh, characters. So uh, they say that these are not a part of the evolution of uh, species uh, up to the man. So it could be a myth. So in fact, uh, this is where through, uh, through it's actually an evolution of consciousness Yes, which has been uh, brought out in names and different names and forms for a common man to understand uh, in the Vedantic concept. So, which has been uh, mistakenly taken as a mythology. So, we need to understand Dashavatara in detail uh, just to uh, get out of this uh, uh, understanding that it's a myth. Understand? Huh. Difference between Western teaching and the, the Vedic uh, understanding of the avatars. True. Because, because the Western science always focused on the form, they said they are zoomorphic and then it is just a, you know, Myth. imaginary thing, doesn't fall with the evolution. True. But uh, as you rightly said, which is the consciousness, evolution of consciousness, which is the Fundamental character. Correct. Uh, and that is where we, because figures are only symbolic. Symbolic. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for giving it. So, why do we need to understand Dashadha? Understanding the story of Dashadha guides us and links to Sri Arbindo's work, helping us to appreciate the sadhana and to explore the commonalities of Dashavatara and the knowledge of life divine penned by Sri Arbindo. So actually what has happened is, uh, how we should understand Dashavatara is, as uh, I, I'm trying to give an analogy, as uh, uh, students, they graduate from 1st standard to 10th standard. The first nine avatars are the graduation from the 1st standard to the ninth standard, whereas the 10th standard, where is the final stage, is actually the Kalki avatar. The tenth, where, but what we are doing is, we are trying to understand Sri Aurobindo directly going Mm, uh, to understand the consciousness, but if we try to relate that to the, all the nine avatars from the Vedic concept, Vedantic concept, it would be very appropriate and easy for many of us and uh, the Arbindonians also to understand the entire evolution of consciousness and Dashavatara is speaking about the evolution of consciousness of life on earth. So the framework of Dashavatara, so the story of Dashavatara can be perceived in multiple frameworks. But the problem lies in discovering the core truth. So there is so much of confusion uh, because it is, uh, we are, people are thinking that it's a myth because there is multiple frameworks woven into one story. 
so with names and forms that is the problem which is uh, which has been created and uh, which is projected as a myth so we need to understand the core truth and the core uh, essence of the entire dashavatara this is possibly possible only if we can decode it plausibly through philology the seed meaning or bijartha uh, of the names of each of the uh, avatars the multiple frameworks of understanding are a religious understanding and anthropological understanding where you have the evolution of uh, species and a religious understanding is uh, sura asura fights uh, what we have generally seen in the vedantic concept and uh, of course the cosmological approach is also there uh, and uh, quantum mechanical approach mechanics approach where uh, physical properties of nature uh, to the scale of molecule atom and submolecule also is a part of the dashavatara if we go deep you can understand that also has been woven into the entire subject and for the fifth one is the spiritual approach as an evolution of consciousness today i will be touching upon the one to one fifth one uh, topics decoding dashavatara yogis and the maharshis of ancient period have woven a complex knowledge gained by unique capabilities into simple story formats the stories are intertwined through multiple frameworks into a single and large format as epic the story contains metaphors of zoomorphic and human characters shown in a comical format illustrated format the purpose of such a narration is for a common man to understand remember and transfer the knowledge for generations orally the story of dashavatara created are in fact a pure scientific narration with characters having unique names and forms explaining the evolution of life and consciousness on earth so the story of dashavatara created are in fact a pure scientific narration this can be proved through philology or bijartha and uh, understanding reading shri arbindo and his experience so with characters having unique names and forms the names and forms are are uh, coined in such a way that once you decode you will understand the true uh, and the pure scientific narration of that explaining the evolution of life and consciousness on earth how do we approach the understanding of the story in the ashatara stories are encrypted and coined scientifically using bijartha seed meaning or encrypted philology each name and form depicts some type of energy or a phenomenon this method of encrypted story when decrypted conveys the unique character of the uh, unique character characteristics of the character the story sometimes are enigmatic wield by comic natured characters through encrypted names and forms hiding the signs to awe and impress upon the memory of the reader hence creating a sense of myth for the present day scientific minds see vedantic uh, concept is generally is in a very sto story format so that uh, it can be trans transferred and uh, understood by uh, uh, children and remembered so even we would have not read the bhagavad gita or uh, the dashavatara but anyway anyone uh, uh, if you see any of the uh, people who follow vedantic uh, concept they would surely know about the entire dashavatara all the 10 avatars and uh, without even reading anything that has been possible because it has been created and structured in such a way orally it can be explained and uh, the characters are very uh, unrealistic also for a, uh, for a uh, for certain purpose and then uh, it can be carried and understood and uh, uh, transmitted so that is one of the key reasons but if you see the words and the uh, Uh, names uh, so there actually the codification has happened so once you decode that then you will really understand the core truth decoding the hidden sides in the stories would greatly help us to get a better perspective of the pantheon of gods in sanatana dharma the few hidden perspective of dashavatara are, are humanities values and virtues so if you see dashavatara uh, the do's and don'ts are also uh, Uh, also woven into the story it is not only the evolution of consciousness there is a moral uh, teaching also which is a part of the entire th story that is talking about humanity is how a human uh, uh, human being has to uh, perform in this world and how the society has to be there there is the very subjects uh, if you take political sciences there you have uh, uh, biology you have uh, physics you have chemistry all that is woven into one story and that is dashavatara so there is so many layers and layers uh, there are so many threads which have been woven that's why it is so confusing but if you have to get to the core 
there is a way to get to the core that is through philology so even cosmology is also introduced and then evolution of consciousness also is introduced as i have been talking these are the hidden perspectives of dashavatara the western critics have sidelined and demeaned the unparalleled knowledge of science hidden in the vedanta and sanatana dharma for which now there is a relentless search by the scientific community in this very domain the progress of science has now stuck for complete understanding of quantum mechanics so in turn there is almost 2700 scientists in switzerland they have working to understand the quantum mechanics whereas in dashavatara it, uh, it is it is clearly they have, uh, we can understand we can see that uh, the answer lies there so if uh, someone can go dig deep and understand uh, the vedantic concept uh, the answers for quantum mechanics really lies there the solution thus may be hidden in the indian philosophy and vedanta the framework chosen for the presentation unfolds the religious understanding and the spiritual understanding are the two topics which we would be talking so in, under the religious understanding god comes as an avatar to kill or punish the asuras who trouble the devas and then restore dharma that is what we generally understand uh, the spiritual understanding is approaches the evolution of consciousness which is actually what sri arbindo is uh, speaking about so now uh, here we can see uh, the dashavatara where uh, vishnu here it is a 10 forms of vishnu dashavatara as understood generally it is not merely a story of battle between suras and asuras and the 10 avatars incarnating to help the suras to win for dharma it is in fact the story of 10 stages of evolution of consciousness actually it is the 10 stages of evolution of consciousness it is not merely a battle between suras and asuras see so, dashavataras they are the 10 milestones of evolution of consciousness on earth starting from matsya avatara kurma avatara varaha avatara narsimha vamana parashurama shri rama avatara balarama krishna and kalki these are the 10 milestones of evolution of consciousness so if if we are talking about kalki avatar and shri arbindo so it is the last in the 10th avatar so where the evolution of consciousness is evolved and the krishna avatar is the overmind consciousness and the kalki avatar is the uh, descent of the superman too so that is the last avatar and and if we see the kalki avatar i am trying to relate that to shri arbindo and the sadhana of shri arbindo is actually to bring down the superman too force and bring in the new uh, race and a new age so that is what kalki also is in, uh, is is shown to be doing in bhagavata purana what is an avatar shri arbindo uh, if you have to understand what shri arbindo is talking about avatar so avatar is an incarnation of the divine in a physical form for facilitating the process of evolution of consciousness on planet earth in a step by step process dashavatara is the story of incarnation of lord vishnu in 10 different forms as avatar to facilitate it restoring dharma the hindu cosmic calendar explains the timelines which is known as yuga cycle narrating the birth of the 10 avatars as dashavatara in different yugas the 10 avatars are the milestones in the evolution process a proper decoding of the dashavatara would strengthen our understanding about the evolution process on and how life on earth got created this is an important thing the proper decoding of the dashavatara would strengthen our understanding about the evolution process and how life on earth got created the knowledge thus gained would expand our understanding about the evolution of human consciousness and link links to shri arbindo's philosophy mind to super mind man to superman so shri arbindo himself says the avatar is necessary when a special work is to be done and in the crisis of evolution the avatar is a special manifestation this is in uh, volume 22 letters on yoga avatar would have little meaning if it were not connected to the evolution i'll go to the next paragraph the moment the avatar becomes aware of his double nature human but also divine he knows from within without the guidance of an external guru that the divine of the divine of whose nature he partakes is the drive impelling him to fulfill his mission so this is the drive impelling shri arbindo to fulfill his mission that he understands that uh, is human 
and he partakes that the divine of whose nature he partakes so he becomes a part is like amsha of that's why every avatar is amsha vishnu so that's what it means who whose nature he partakes is the divine impelling is the drive impelling him to fulfill his mission while requiring him to tread on unprecedented path so she had been again is a path no one has uh, uh, trailed on so is unprecedented path the avatar's action is for the whole of humanity see there are the very important point is avatars generally are not for a sect of people or for their disciples alone it is for the entire humanity if their work is impacting the entire humanity then they are called as an avatar so here she arbindo is not only for a group of people it is for the entire humanity she arbindo is brought down and the supramental force onto the earth and bring in a new race so that clearly shows that uh, he is an avatar avatar's mission uh, to show the way and also to restore the social and ethical order the dharma while leading the individuals and society one step forward in the evolution of consciousness and being is very clear here the descending power chooses its own place body time for the manifestation so all this is written by shri arbindo in the letters on yoga volume 22 so what mother says about avatar hota so if you we will read that the avatar is an incarnation upon earth of the supreme truth but originally as it is said in the gita for example when the supreme decides to manifest upon earth a particular reason and for a particular reason and takes an earthly body it is said that he is an avatar he may take many successive bodies according to the needs and circumstances but it is always what could be called the central being which takes an earthly body that is what is called an avatar shri arbindo has explained this in many places this is she, uh, mother writes in uh, uh, on 11th may 1951 so another one shri arbindo is an uh, em emanation of the supreme who came on earth to announce the manifestation of a new race and a new world the supramental one more uh, quote shri arbindo does not belong to the past not uh, no belong to the past not to history shri arbindo is the future advancing towards realization this is a very important uh, quote shri arbindo does not belong to the past not to history so we are all in kali yuga so and uh, kalki uh, we don't know we are some people say that uh, kalki is born and they have confusion uh, that kalki will come on a horse riding and he will save the world but uh, for what here it is clearly mentioned here bindu does not belong to the past and not to history so he is the future see kalki is the one who is taking us to the future so that's what he is riding on a horse and seeing a head and going upwards showing the future so here mother clearly says shri arbindo does not belong to the past not to history shri arbindo is the future advancing like riding a horse she is saying advancing towards its realization the words of mother on other uh, father words by mother in the eternity of becoming each avatar is only the announcer the forerunner of a more perfect future realization and yet men have always the tendency to defy the avatar of the past in opposition to the avatar of the future generally what happens is uh, during uh, krishna's avatar also people around krishna never realized that he was an avatar so and they thought rama was an avatar and uh, uh, they could not accept krishna because he, he was amidst them similarly shri arbindo is uh, amidst us and now people are still thinking that he is not kalki so that could be another thing that's what mother says here and, and yet men have always a tendency to defy the avatar of the past in opposition to the avatar of the future now again shri arbindo has come announcing to the world the realization of tomorrow and again his message meets with the same opposition as of all those who preceded him but tomorrow will prove the truth of what he revealed and his work will be done that's what mother says so tomorrow it will be proved that 
uh, what what is the kind of work what he has revealed and and the work uh, will be done that means whatever the purpose for which Sri Aurobindo has taken birth will be done is what mother says here. Sri Aurobindo came upon earth to announce the manifestation of the supreme world and not merely did he announce this manifestation by embodied but embodied also in part the supramental force and showed by example what on must do we to prepare oneself of manifesting it. Sri Aurobindo came upon earth to announce the manifestation of the supreme world and not merely did he announce this manifestation but embodied also in part the supramental force and showed by example what on must do to prepare oneself for manif of manifesting it. So what is, what is our role and uh, he has paved the path for us and how we should move forward in this direction is what Mother is saying. As Sri Aurobindo Uh, these are, uh, uh, anyway, as, as Sri Aurobindo anyway mentioned that he is an avatar. So I uh, tried to dig out uh, various uh, quotes uh, to find out whether Sri Aurobindo himself has said that he is an avatar. So these are a few quotes which I, uh, which is very subtle uh, uh, intent. Sri Aurobindo wrote to Nirod Bharan that we do not usually encourage sadhaks of ashram to write about us as divine. He says in Ibid 433, he never bothered to reply whether he was an avatar or not, leaving it to his disciple to decide for themselves. So that means he never bothered. When someone asked whether you are an avatar, he never actually directly said anything that I am an avatar. So he never bothered to reply whether he was an avatar or not, leaving it to the disciples to decide for themselves. To one disciple who wrote, yes, uh, Sri Aurobindo writes, Elsewhere, in quotes, uh, elsewhere people try to find out various qualities in their guru to prove him an avatar. Here, some try to find out reasons to disprove even the possibility. So this is a very humorous uh, thing uh, which Sri Aurobindo is uh, writing. Elsewhere people try to, generally people say that uh, their gurus are avatars. So here, in uh, he says in our ashram, people are on the contrary trying to disprove that uh, uh, the same uh, avatar concept. So elsewhere people try to find out various qualities in their guru to prove him an avatar. Here some, here means there is in our ashram, there is uh, ashram. Here some try to find out reasons to disprove even the possibility. So that's what he says. Sri Aurobindo humorously replied, it's a modern ashram, that's why. So he says, uh, the, uh, it, because it's a very modern ashram, people are trying to do it this way. That's what he replies for a question by one of the disciples. So I have a strong feeling that you are the divine incarnation. Am I right? One of the devotees question. This is a question asked by a disciple. Follow your faith. It is not likely to mislead you, Sri Aurobindo. So it's a very important thing. So I have a, the disciple asks, I have a strong feeling that you are the divine incarnation. Am I right? Because it's a straight question, it can, can't be dodged. But even then he clearly, very subtle ways he says, follow your faith. It is not likely to mislead you. So he's in a very subtle way he's saying that, yes, I am an avatar. So about Sri Aurobindo, Nirod Bharan, has, there is a lot of discussion between Nirod Bharan and uh, Sri Aurobindo about avatar. So I've taken a few points of that. So Nirod Bharan asks, uh, because Sri Aurobindo is an avatar, his sadhana can have no meaning for humanity. He's saying that uh, Sri Aurobindo is doing sadhana for himself and it cannot have any much meaning to humanity. What happens in Sri Aurobindo's sadhana cannot happen in any, anybody's else sadhana. That is neither descent nor realization, nor transformation, nor intuition, nor budding of a new power or faculty. Because uh, Sri Aurobindo is an avatar and sadhaks are not. So what he questions uh, Sri Aurobindo is, you are doing so much of sadhana and uh, so many things can happen in you, but how will it happen in, in other disciples? That was his question. Because you are an avatar, so it will happen in you and uh, others, how, how will others get this benefit? Sri Aurobindo says, I don't know about other, other, I don't know about other avatars. Practically what I know is that I had not all the powers necessary when I started. When I started, I did not have these powers. I had to develop them by yoga. At least many of them which were not 
in existence in me when i began and those which were i had to train to a higher degree which i had i had to train to a higher degree my own idea of the matter is that the avatar's life and action are not miracles so even if the avatar comes on to the earth it he will not be doing miracles so if we see rama so he went out had lot of uh, difficulties in his entire life and uh, even though he, he didn't know that he was an avatar but uh, he had to go through all the human uh, uh, sacrifices and uh, uh, the uh, grinding of the human uh, human life so here he says the same thing my own idea of the uh, matter is that avatar's life and actions are not miracles and if they were his existence would be perfectly useless a mere superfluous freak of nature he accepts the terrestrial condition so who accepts the the avatar himself accepts the terrestrial condition there is a condition to be born on this plane and try to evolve the consciousness the avatar has to accept that condition and go through that he uses means he shows the way to humanity as well as helps it otherwise what is the use of him and why is he here so he could have done done a miracle and everyone would have at the highest level of consciousness so he says that the very purpose of coming on to the earth as it to uh, accepting the terrestrial condition nirodhvaran asks another question some say 24 uh, november 24 is a day of victory by that some mean that the super mind or the super mental conscious descended into the physical conscious of shri arbindo others say that it was coming down of krishna into the physical consciousness if it was the descent of krishna does that mean in the descent of super, super mental light shri arbindo replies krishna is not super mental light the descent of krishna would mean the descent of over mind god had preparing do not itself actually bringing in the descent of super mind and ananda krishna is anandamaya he supports the evolution through the over mind leading it towards his ananda so this is what he clearly mentions this is in i bit 1935 so and to ah uh, i was not always in the over mind if you please i had to climb there from mental and vital level so uh, shri arvind explains how we had to uh, do the sadhana and move forward uh, to the stage what he was let me remind out of what i wrote about the avatar there are two sides of the phenomena of the avatar world the divine consciousness behind and the instrumental personality the divine consciousness is omnipotent but it has put forward the instrumental personality in nature under the condition of nature whatever the conditions are there of nature it has it has put as it as a instrumental personality in nature and it uses it according to the rules of the game do also sometimes to change the rules of the game so it is using the rules of the game and also to try to change the rules of the game so it is trying to evolve something and as well as go through the same process of, uh, uh, conditions of the evolution of consciousness and with the same consciousness which is which was prevailing at that point of time if it is a coherent part of the arrangement of the omnipresent divine in nature then i can understand and accept it so nirodhvaran says what your views come to uh, put in syllogism is this since i have done it and i am an avatar every other blessed creature can do it so this is what he says if you can do it that does that mean that everyone can do it so uh, the reply from sherbindo is this is idiotic i have said follow my path the way i have discovered for you through my own efforts and examples transform your nature from animal to the spiritual grow into a higher divine consciousness all this you can do by your own aspiration aided by the force of divine shakti that if you please is not the utterance of the madman or an uh, imbecile that means uh, uh, some it means stupid or something like that i have said i have opened the way now you with the divine help can follow it he says that i have opened the way that is transforming myself i have opened the way i have not said find the way for yourself as i did 
so he has not mentioned that uh, you everyone has to reinvent the wheel he has paved the way for us and it is for us to continue in that path so nil baran asks if i knew i was an avatar do you think i would cry or wail for a fear of any amount of crashes and collisions or would it matter if i began with a nature with not a grain of spirituality in me i would jump from peak to peak in summer salts go down the abysses rise up the steps without fear of mortal consequences since i would know that i was divine so nirvan here asked if i knew i was a divine i would not have feared anything i would have jumped from peak to peak in summer salts so he is like uh, kind of very critically uh, speaking about shri arbindo sadhana here uh, he re uh, shri arbindo replies would you in you know, the question mark i wish you had been in my place you would have been 100 times more fit than myself if you really could have done that and how easily things would have been done while i i did them i am still doing them with enormous difficulty this is very important that the sadhana what shri arbindo is doing what is the kind of difficulty is going through and i am still doing with them with enormous difficulty because i lead and have to make the path so that others may follow it with less difficulty so if you just re recollect the image of uh, the kalki so he is he is fighting uh, with the hostile forces say, uh, riding on the horses uh, or his horse which is devadatta so here it is a continuous fight here she are in the while i did them and i am still doing because we are in kali yuga it is very clear that uh, the new new race has not evolved it is in the process of evolution so that is what the fighting is still going on even today's message also is uh, very appropriate to that if you can read and all the happening happenings which is going on in the world starting from the first world war first world war second world war and uh, and now the corona and all other things it is actually there's so much of uh, uh, fight happening if uh, if not for sri arbindo's and mother's intervention there could have been a third world war and uh, who knows there could have been that could have been the prayala pralaya so that has been uh, uh, some of uh, taken care and uh, we are all kind of uh, uh, getting on with the evolution of consciousness so this what is the answer for what uh, nirod baran says let me make it clear that in all i wrote i was not writing to prove that i am an avatar so here it says uh, i let me make it clear that in all i wrote i was not writing writing to prove that i am an avatar so it is indirectly he saying that that he is an avatar it, let me make it clear that in all i wrote i was not trying to prove that i am an avatar so the next another phrase uh, you uh, shervindu says you say that this way is too difficult for you or the likes of you and it is only avatars like myself or the mother can do it this is a strange misconception for it is on the contrary the easiest and the simplest the most direct way anyone can do it if he makes up makes his mind and vital quiet even those who have the tenth of your capacity can do it it is the other way of tension and strain and hard endeavor that is difficult and needs a great force of tapasya as for the mother and myself we have all as as for the mother and myself we have had to try always follow all methods to surmount mountains of difficulties so here is he says how mother is collaborating with shri arbindo to bring on bring down the supermental force as mother and myself we have tried all ways follow all methods to surmount mountains of difficulties here again we should link to the kalki image the avatar where he is riding the horse the here the horse in, uh, in the kalki uh, avatar the horse and the rider are together actually here we have to horse is nothing but shakti or the force they are together the horse and the rider are are collaborating together and trying to achieve or, or fight the hostile forces here uh, what we have uh, since mother and shri arbindo are the twin avatars 
uh, as uh, uh, they have been called. So the twin avatar is like uh, they collaboratively work to bring down the supramental force. Here, uh, the Kalki avatar also the horse and the rider that is Kalki are collaboratively working and, and fighting the hostile forces and trying to win the war uh, and bring down the new race or the new life on earth. For a, for a heavier and uh, yeah, battles to fight, wounds to endure, ways to cleave through impenetrable morass and desert and forest, hostile masses to conquer a work such as I am certain none else had to do before us. That's what Sri Aurobindo says. It is. It was a uh, humongous uh, task. Battles to fight, wounds to endure. This is all what they have gone through. Ways to cleave through impenetrable morass and desert and forest, hostile mosses to conquer a work. Uh, to conquer a work such as I am certain none else had to do before us. So it was such a. Uh, uh, task they had to go through. So both mother and Sri Aurobindo, just like the Kalki Avatar, so it was fighting the hostile forces. Here Sri Aurobindo and mother are trying to work on themselves and do the sadhana and bring down the uh, supramental force. For the leaders of the way in a work like ours has not only to bring down, the, represent and embody the divine, but to represent too the ascending element in humanity and to bear the burden of humanity to the full and experience. Not in a mere play or leela, but in a grim earnest. All the obstruction, difficulty, opposition, baffled and hampered, and only slow, victorious labor which are possible on the path. But it is not necessary, not tolerable, that all that should be repeated over again and to the full of experience to others. It is because we have the complete experience that we can show straighter and easier roads to others. If they will only consent to take it. It is because our experience won at a tremendous price that we can urge upon you and others, take the psychic attitude, follow the straight sunlit path with the divine openly or secretly upbearing you. If secretly, he will yet show himself in good time do not insist on the hard, hampered, roundabout and difficult journey. Here Sri Aurobindo clearly he specifies the way as the sunlit path, the straight sunlit path is the way. Yogan asks, how is it that later avatars often found fault with the actions and movements of the predecessors? predecessor, sorry. Sri Aurobindo says, who finds fault with whom? I am not found fault with any avatar. So here again it is very clear in a subtle way that he is trying to reiterate that he is an avatar. I have never fault, found faults with anyone. So it clearly says that he is an avatar. However, I shall consult your essay on Gita to see hey, what you say about avatar. So Abhinav says, can you, under, can you not understand that it was the neutral logic result of statement made on either side about the unbridgeable distance between man divine and the human being, moon in the darkness towards the divine. If you admit the utility of my sadhana, the controversy ceases. But so long as you declare that what I have done in my sadhana has no connection with what can be done, I shall go on beating you. But still, if you read three or four chapters, there you shall get some idea of the general principles here. So continuously, there is an argument between Nirod Bharan and uh, Sri Aurobindo saying that what uh, Sri Aurobindo has been doing is not useful for the common man. So he gives a very clear and, uh, answer uh, and uh, Nirod Bharan and uh, he says, okay, I will uh, I'll keep beating you uh, in the discussion is what uh, it states. For the rest, I propose that all discussion be postponed till 21st. Uh, this will give time for you to clear your ideas and, few, and for me to pursue my avataric sadhana. So this is again, every, we could take it as a sarcastic, uh, humorous or a, uh, this thing that I have to carry out my sar avataric sadhana. So we'll temporarily suspend the further discussion, sir. So here, uh, very important uh, point here is the stages of spiritual development of Krishna open the possibility of overmind. Buddha tries to shoot beyond the supreme liberation, but the liberation is still negative, not returning upon our earth to complete positively the evolution. So because many people say that Buddha also is an avatar, but uh, Sri Aurobindo clearly says 
Buddha is not an avatar. So the reason being, uh, and even the Buddhist, uh, their disciples also say that Buddha is not an avatar. So, and he's, he's a Buddha. Buddha tries to shoot beyond the supreme liberation, but the liberation is still negative, is what Sri Aurobindo says. Not returning upon the earth to complete the positive, complete positively the evolution. He, he, he does not return back to complete the evolution. That's what uh, Sri Aurobindo says. Kalki is to correct this by bringing the kingdom of divine upon. This is the uh, quote of Sri Aurobindo. This is the very, very important thing. Kalki is to correct this by bringing the kingdom of divine upon earth. So Kalki is the one who brings the divine upon earth, destroying the opposing Asura forces. So what does Sri Aurobindo in his sadhana do? He does the same thing. What it says is life divine bringing the divine upon earth. He brings the supermental force onto earth and that is what he himself is saying. Kalki is to correct this by bringing the kingdom of divine upon earth, destroying the opposing Asura forces. So Kalki is the one destroying the Asura forces. What we see in the image are written as per the Bhagavad Purana and as per Sri Aurobindo Sadhana, it is the same thing. What he is doing is trying to uh, bring down the kingdom of divine upon earth, which we read it as life divine, destroying the upon the uh, destroying the opposing asura forces and all the, what he is going through, and mother is going through in sadhana what I just mentioned, and is clearly mentioned uh, showing that the, they are fighting with the hostile forces. The progression is striking and unmistakable. If we admit that the object of avatar wood is to lead the evolution, this is quite reasonable. The divine appearing as avatar in a great transitional stages and as vibhutis to aid the lesser transition. So here he gives a, cl a clarification about the avatars and vibhutis. There are so many vibhutis also who have come onto this earth plane and uh, who are helping the transition. So, but the avatars work on the entire humanity, whereas vibhutis are, are uh, working on a part. That's what. Why should the avatar incarnate human body? Nevertheless, even the divine, when, uh, when incarnate on earth, it is subject to the same law of progress. As I mentioned, it is uh, for the it, it is a law that the avatar also has to go through the same kind of uh, process because it uh, he himself has created and evolved through the same thing and churn and the whole uh, evolution and create a new rule of evolution. So, as I mentioned, this is the avatar and vibhuti where avatar is for the entire humanity and vibhuti is for a group of people or uh, a part of uh, the human race. So, uh, as a, uh, what Sri Aurobindo says about Buddha being an avatar. So, Buddha was, not, uh, here I'll just go to this, Buddha was not an avatar at all. He was the sole climbing up the ladder of spiritual evolution till it reached the final stage of emancipation. This is the letters of yoga, he says this. Buddha never said he was an avatar of a personal God, but he was Buddha. So this is uh, what it says, uh, quickly run through. Uh, ah, so what does Sri Aurobindo say about Kalki and the relevance of Kalki's image with a sword on a horse? What Sri Aurobindo himself says about Kalki, let us uh, read this. Sri Aurobindo says, too much importance need not be attached to the details about Kalki. They are rather symbolic than an attempt to prophesize details of future history. What is expressed is something that has to come, but it's symbolically indicated. No more. So too, too much weight need not be put on the exact figures about the Yuga in the Purana. He also says the Yuga calculation, you not have to, we are saying that Kalki will only come in the end of the Kali Yuga because it is almost 4,32 years is the entire Kali Yuga. So it is hardly 5 or 6,000 is what we understand. But Sri Aurobindo says too much weight need not be put on the exact figures about the Yuga in the Purana. So because uh, people who are talking about Yuga are not very clear when it has started and when it will end, but uh, there is a bit of a confusion. But here he also says that you not have to uh, put on the exact figures about the Yuga in the Purana. Here again, the color and the, uh, and the Yugas indicate successive periods of the cyclic wheel evolution. In one of the things, he has shown a wheel. 
the perfect state decline and disintegration of successive ages of humanity followed by new birth the mathematical calculation are not the important element so the calculation of the yuga is not very important because uh, above the clarity because of the clarity the argument of the end of kali yuga already come or coming and the new satya yuga is familiar one and there have been many who have upheld it as for the mother and myself we have have we had to try always follow all methods to surmount mountain to difficulty a far heavier burden to bear this uh, i think i have uh, already covered this so this is a, uh, just to give us an idea about the evolution evolution is step by step process uh, to evolve consciousness force is what is the yuga cycle these are the yuga cycle a kalpa and a pralaya last for 432 million human years 1000 maha yugas is one kalpa 14 manvantras is one kalpa 17 uh, 71 yuga cycle uh, is one manvantra one yuga cycle is 43 last 20000 years so here actually you see two wheels one is smaller one the bigger one so we all know that uh, the brahmas uh, a blink of an eye of uh, brahma will be a, uh, a couple of years for the human Uh, species so you have uh, the human life cycle is a smaller wheel and the bigger cycle is the wheel of the life of brahma so this smaller wheel has to uh, run for many many times so that a small uh, movement for the bigger wheel so this is we have the seconds and the uh, minutes and the hour nearly in a clock so the seconds are continuously moving at a faster rate then comes the r needle uh, sorry minute needle and then the r needle so this is the r needle is the brahma and uh, the seconds needle is the human life so the human life run much faster and so many lives of and evolution happens and then a small movement in the brahma's uh, age uh, is happening this is what is the uh, analogy which i try to keep here and uh, here again uh, you see a bell curve growth curve where uh, this is a start point there is a growth stage and the maturity period and there is a decline each portion of this is called a kalpa and uh, from the growth up to the maturity is a, is one phase and now we are in the mature stage and we are supposed to if there is a pralaya there will be a decline and entire thing and a new uh, uh, yuga will start satya yuga but because shri arbindo intervention and uh, his sadhana what has happened is there is something called a inflex curve so if you see the other graph here the similarly the uh, uh, the bell curve goes up and then there is an inflex which where it instead of uh, declining it shoots up again and then another uh, race or another stage of evolution happens that is the a new race that is a new age shear shear argued evolution is possible only because the divine has involved or hidden himself in the material universe at the beginning of the creation she arbindus you man has a vital role to play in his future evolution a consciousness is being conscious being man can choose to take part in his own evolution accelerate the process exceed it his inherent limitations as a mental being and become a supramental being that is by self surrender so dharma and karma are the two concepts of uh, vedantic concept so dharma is actually a state of balance and adharma is state of imbalance so actually whenever uh, for evolution there has to be a state of balance if there is a state of imbalance what happens is the evolution uh, slows down so the avatar comes and puts the entire process into a state of balance it is like a tug of war if you can see here so this is the tug of war so uh, the uh, from a vedantic concept you have the suras and asuras and even the samudra mantan if you see there are two uh, two set of people the suras and asura they are trying to churn the ocean so uh, because of the churning you have new things uh, uh, coming out even in the uh, curds of the butter, butter churn, when the curd is churned you have the butter which uh, uh, is found or i mean emanates so here similarly when there is a dharma has to prevail for the consciousness to evolve she have been to says uh, as i have said of some essential and radical needed of the terrestrial evolution which is the evolution of embodied spirit through successive stages towards the divine 
so he is explaining about the uh, dasha avatar first the fish avatar the amphibious animal land and uh, water then the land animal man lion avatar bridging man and animal so he is giving about the evolution the object of avatar wood is to lead the evolution that's what he says the object of avatar wood is to lead the evolution so dasha avatar we will just see the dasha avatar what exactly so these are the 10 stages of avatar actually the stages the stages of development of human consciousness on this planet earth if we can relate the 10 avatars from starting from matsya to kalki it is actually the evolution of uh, the consciousness on earth which can also be related to the evolution life cycle of a human being also if you see at the start point you have the uh, matsya avatar which is at the womb stage as the child uh, as zygote is formed in the mother's womb it's from the zygote it moves to be a, a, a transforms and evolves and takes birth and then you have a stage where it is in the cradle and then it moves uh, on to become a young lad and then uh, he becomes a teenager and then uh, grows into a uh, uh, grows into adulthood uh, adulthood and then uh, the decline starts and then he uh, the body goes to the grave so this is the entire life cycle similarly the entire earth's consciousness also earth's evolution also happens the same way starting from the matsya avatar where the consciousness is evolving like in the mother's womb and then uh, it, it transforms and finally uh, evolves to the super mind level ah here yeah, this is the uh, important chart which i want to uh, show you this is actually the stage 1 is the matsya avatar here this uh, the top uh, uh, indication is basically the dasha avatar indication and the second line is actually the human life cycle if you see these two cycles you can understand how uh, it is interlinked the earth cycle and it's also the dasha avatar is talking about the earth's life cycle itself so how the earth evolved itself so here in the stage of matsya the water was created and then uh, the fishes were the first uh, creatures which uh, uh, was born uh, from the uh, thing is uh, unicellular to multicellular and then to fish that's at the womb stage and then uh, you have the uh, uh, kurma stage where it's an amphibian both land and water and you have uh, the varaha stage is like uh, the child which is crawling as a toddler so at the toddler stage uh, just like a boar or a pig so the child tries to understand and puts uh, whatever it uh, reaches into its mouth and tries to understand and uh, is very fast and uh, quite aggressively moving in you see that as a boar avatar the next stage is the childhood which is uh, they throw a lot of tantrums uh, that is the age between 2 uh, to 8 years that's the narsimha avatar where one part of the body is shown as a uh, human and the upper part is shown as as an animal which is the lion lion headed so the idea is basically the consciousness has started evolving and uh, how it is halfway through and it is not complete still the force is more than the consciousness so that's why uh, the avatar of narasimha uh, is shown and uh, if you so see the uh, avatars it is the first four avatars is the evolution of earth where there is a descent of consciousness on to the earth to make the entire earth globe where uh, the cosmic consciousness can descend and uh, the surface of the earth is also created in such a way the humans can create i mean develop and mentally they can evolve to become superhumans this is actually the first four stages and the next four stages is what uh, depicted there and uh, the entire life cycle uh, as we see here uh, from infancy to mature adulthood and uh, finally uh, nearing the grave but here since the intervention of uh, kalki uh, or shri arbindo so the body does not go back uh, the consciousness does not need not have to prior not have to happen from here the satya yuga starts and a new human race is evolved so this is the entire uh, link which we can uh, connect so from the philology perspective from the language perspective we have to understand uh, vedas shri arbindo says it is mentioned by scholars that veda contains in it a wisdom of spiritual culture it expresses its view using a popular language the ordinary people understand the popular meaning by the real meaning but the real meaning is understood by the 
is minute only so the vedic word expresses a double sense there are the two different kinds of meaning a subtler meaning and a superficial meaning as for example the go is a bracket cow ordinary ordinary is meant as cow an animal but its secret meaning is light that's what sri aurobindo says like uh, the word asura means or uh, horse but the psychological sense is a vital force or energy does the same word carries one meaning for the profane and the other meaning for the initiates so this is actually what sri aurobindo is talking about the significance of subject consciousness which informs and is the soul of body of the sound it is a super conscious nature force raising its material out of subconsciousness but growing Uh, growingly conscious in its operation in the human mind that develops itself one fundamental way and get variously in language so so it's it's is talking about the understanding of uh, language there is subtle meaning and there is a deeper meaning uh, sorry superficial meaning so if you have to understand the uh, in the avatar concept so from the philology perspective so each alphabet has got a meaning so if you say ma as energy ta as receive sa as life force and ya as regulator so if we substitute here as matsya avatar so matsya avatar is here matsya and avatar avatar means strong form of life being receive or absorb matsya means regulating within the energy received by life force matsya plus avatar regulating within the energy received by life force plus strong form of living matter which is receiving so this is actually the word matsya and avatar uh, if you join together this is what is the total meaning strong form of life life being absorbs and regulates within energy received by life force this is what is the uh, sub total some total of the meaning uh, through philology so if you can understand each of this Uh, avatars we can clearly understand what is who is who means peers or compact or penetrate so ar means solar consciousness ma again means energy so it is the same alphabet uh, if you substitute you will get the meaning of it so uh, kurma avatar a strong form of life being this is actually the first word is avatar we have to read from right to left strong form of life being absorbs and penetrates solar consciousness energy varaha means so va means life being or it's a medium ra means strong ha means consciousness or it can be stable also there is another meaning to that so varaha avatar means strong form of life being with strong universal consciousness that's what varaha avatar means so narasimha let us see what narasimha avatar means so na means conduit ra means strong c means heat o is origin or source ha is again consciousness or stable so narasimha avatar means strong form of life being absorbs and conduits strong heat source of universal consciousness so uh, this is what if you see even narasimha avatar he breaks open the pillar and then uh, comes out so he is showing the force the uh, force still existing in uh, even though is half half is evolved as consciousness human consciousness still the other half is very fearful that is what it uh, means and even in the meaning it is showing the same thing so where what is the source of this so, so those meanings are uh, actually uh, i have created a, a dictionary where each alphabet has got a meaning so all the alphabets vowels and consonants put together uh, almost 586 meanings are there to each vowels and consonant which i have created and if we substitute that we will get the exact meaning of all the words from the vedantic vedantic perspective so that is what is sri arbindo is talking about the origin of uh, speech aryan speech so he says that every if we can understand the science of language that is actually the law of language there is a law of language and science of uh, which will be the science of knowledge so where each alphabet has got a meaning so but she he says that i am unable to go ahead and work on this because there are other things uh, which uh, has taken my time he mentions very categorically and uh, this work has to be done 
so uh, i've been trying to work on that and uh, uh, to a very large extent almost around that means for example we ah. so we have got a uh, meaning why has got a meaning vamana why has got a meaning ma has got a meaning na has got a meaning so so, so that is the right you are saying b has got one meaning a has got one meaning in the No, it, uh, this is actually in English we cannot uh, really decode because English is not the right. Uh, this thing, either any of the uh, Indian languages we can do it. So I have done it in Canada. So uh, so each of the alphabet has got uh, because Canada and Sanskrit are very close. So almost sixty to seventy percent of uh, Sanskrit is there in Canada. So and any other languages for that matter, Indian languages, Indo uh, Aryan languages, or the Dravidian languages are all the same. I mean they have uh, a lot of influence of Sanskrit. so if we can take that and uh, if we can decode it will be the same meaning so this is uh, it's a directory uh, dictionary uh, which can reveal lot of things so if you say rama what is the meaning of rama we don't know actually what is the meaning of rama uh, ra means solar consciousness ma means energy so or uh, solar consciousness or consciousness force so solar means again force is there in that so it is a consciousness force energy rama means consciousness force energy so so like that if you decode every uh, character and the name so you will be, you will be able to identify the see how are those names formed basically there is a science behind it actually it is not just that uh, name rama was given so uh, there is an energy which is which has got a character depending on the character the uh, they have chosen the alphabet and uh, the science the science behind that if you substitute that you will get the real meaning of uh, this thing this uh, uh, a lot of examples can be shown but this itself is quite long and uh, uh, maybe we can have another uh, session on that so where we can clearly uh, demonstrate that uh, each alphabet if you substitute uh, it's like a mathematics then there is an algorithm so we can really understand uh, the true meaning and what is the science behind and why they have made this form and uh, given that name to that form so if you say uh, so here parshurama strong form of life being absorbs so this is actually means uh, what this entire thing is repetitive in all the names because it's avatara strong form of life being absorbing is the meaning of avatara avatara means as we know uh, it's a new life or a, a type of life the new life here if you see through decoding the the uh, alphabet strong form of life being absorbs absorbs it is absorbing the consciousness strong form of life being is avatara actually avatara parshurama means strong cosmic consciousness by cutting solar consciousness force energy so if you see parshurama goes around the entire uh, earth 21 times uh, uh, killing all the kshatriyas so kshatriyas means it is the field it is we, should, we have to take it from the if you take it from the science perspective from the metaphysics perspective it is actually the, there were so many fields around the earth so this energy which is coming from the cosmic world is cutting all the uh, uh, fields of energy going around and then allowing making way for the solar consciousness to enter into the earth's plane and start life so this is actually the a true metaphysical understanding thing of parshurama and that is indicated uh, in the name itself so balarama uh, if you have to understand a strong form of life being absorbs expands on solar on land solar consciousness force consciousness force energy see here very important thing is the word land is coming here because there is a uh, alphabet which is saying la la means space land or region and uh, if you see balarama he is holding uh, a plow so that means uh, he is tilling the land see the land uh, the life has started creating on the surface of the earth that is what is indicated through the name as well as the indication of the form so we have to relate the form as well as the name so if you try to link both through philology we are able to decode that and understand so now if you say krishna so krishna uh, actually means 
in sir ka means retain ru means descent within sha means energized particle na means phenomena if you see understand krishna what it means is retaining the descent as energies energized particle phenomena within so krishna what he does he absorbs and retains and behaves like an energized particle so that is why he is energized particle he is like a mayavi he see uh, you cannot really see krishna in a sense uh, he is it shows that he is that energy is a uh, it's a particle which is energized that is what the entire uh, krishna and the character of krishna also in um, in our vedantic understanding is the same thing he is a mayavi and uh, here if you, phenomena of strong form of light being absorbs and retain the descent of energized particle as a phenomena as a phenomena this energy is doing that so now uh, if you have to understand kalki avatar what sri arbindo says about kalki avatar too much importance need not be attached this i think we read this i only took the puranic list of avatars and interpreted it as a parable of evolution so as to show that the idea of evolution is implicit behind the story, behind the theory of avatar hood so now coming to the kalki so if you say ka as i mentioned in krishna also it is retain or withhold here also it is the same ka means withhold or retain li means life force play or act ki means connect within or link so ki means connect within or linking so if you see kalki withholding life force and links within so sri arbindo if you see the sadhana of sri arbindo he brings down the supramental force and connects to his body and links links it that's what is the word kalki is ka means withhold or retain he is linking the supramental force acting as a link bringing down the force and connecting so that's what kalki means withholding life force and links within how he links within he links the supramental force within that is why it is kalki the very word kalki is denoting that uh, what this shri sadhana of shri arbindo so it is not the word kalki is not just come like that so uh, uh, in bhagavad purana the, when they have coined this word kalki that very precisely is that that there will be someone who will work on this and bring the a force and uh, connect within that is what the word ka li ki it is actually li with a smaller ka which means it's a sub, uh, which says within connecting within kalki withhold life force and links within avatar of course we have read it's the same thing so uh, um, collectively it says kalki avatar a strong form of life being absorbing or receiving and withholding the life force and links within this is what is the meaning of kalki so this is actually the exact sadhana of sri arbindo where he brings down the supramental force and links into his body and uh, withholds so so the very word also is linking and it is not only uh, i have uh, uh, i am giving this alphabet's uh, name uh, sorry the meaning and just because it is kalki it is the other way around each of this alphabets have got a meaning if i substitute i am getting this meaning that is how it is yeah no in kannada if you put it as it is ha uh, english yeah, it's a difference yeah yeah it's all uh, yeah 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 Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah, I'll explain that. Yeah, yeah. 
I'll explain that because see, the idea is basically uh, this we have to understand from the perspective of energies and not exactly as human beings and uh, uh, energies. Yeah. So then, if you understand that, what will happen is this energy which is coming from the cosmic uh, plane, uh, uh, where uh, uh, there are so many fields around the earth. Uh, which were abstracting the solar consciousness to enter in and create life on earth. So that... Intentions are different. Huh. Actions the yes, you're right. Correct. So that is why uh, once these fields are broken, even though Rama was a... Dashrata was a Kshatriya, Parshurama never killed him. He killed all other Kshatriyas, but he never killed uh, Rama. Because even Rama was the Kshatriya, because uh, Vasishta, whenever uh, Prashurama was coming, he used to hide uh, Dasharatha amidst women. That, that is actually the way they are saying is, his uh, Dasharatha's requirement is always there because Dasharatha is a field again. It's a field which is covering the entire globe. Dasharatha means, Dasha means 10, Ratha means chariot. It is not actually, it's a symbolic name, which means there are 10 planes on the earth. If you see uh, above the earth, you have the troposphere, mesosphere, exosphere, ozone and all other layers. These layers uh, were abstracting the consciousness from the solar to enter in and, uh, and there's a magnetic field around this. So Parashurama, there may be many other fields which were there at that time. So this cosmic energy uh, removed all those energy. Then finally Rama could enter through Dasharatha and come onto the earth as his son and uh, from the Ikshwaku family lineage. No, Sri Arvinda has not uh, spoken much on this uh, this thing. No, he is here. He has mentioned. No, it is uh, Vedantic concept is the cornerstone of uh, evolution. So he says very clearly: you have to understand Dasha Avatara. Then only you will understand the entire consciousness and the evolution of consciousness. He clearly, but uh, Dasha Avatara itself is Rama and Krishna and all other avatars. So if you are try to understand, then you will understand the whole thing. So now uh, the last few slides. So uh, Kalki was born in Shambhala. That's what, that is the place. So now uh, we have understood Kalki's name and uh, the derivations of that and uh, how it can be linked to see Sadhana of Sri And now uh, very importantly, people are uh, talking about this place called Shambhala where Kalki will be born. And a lot of Western uh, Indologists and I mean Western uh, uh, philosophers, they have tried to find out this where is this place Shambhala and they went to Tibet and uh, uh, near Shangri-La and tried to, but they couldn't find this place because it does not exist. And it is written in uh, Bhagavad Purana. Actually, it is a symbolic name and it has got a deeper meaning. If you decode that only, you will know that it's not, it's not a straight answer that there'll be a place called Shambhala and thousands of uh, years in future, uh, someone will be born there. It is not that. It is a coded meaning of Shambhala. What exactly that means? Actually, Sha means consciousness, O means source, Ba means expand, La means land or region. So this you can see uh, here, all these alphabets makes the word Shambhala. Shambhala means consciousness force expanding region. So it's a source. It's a source of consciousness which is expanding as a region, into a region. That means, now if we see Sri Aurobindo was, uh, where Sri Aurobindo is, if we are saying that Sri Aurobindo is Kalki, so is there any relation where uh, Sri Aurobindo is born? Uh, he was born in Calcutta. Is there any relation to Shambhala? Consciousness source, see, uh, Calcutta is, in the, is a delta region actually. Shambhala means actually a delta region where the river flows and merges into the sea. So Bay of Bengal is the largest delta region. So uh, in the entire world, so the Bay of Bengal. So uh, the Ganga Ganges, the river Ganga flows and uh, as one of the tributaries, the Hooghly River where Calcutta is situated and uh, the source of consciousness is the Ganga River. So it comes and expands into the ocean that is what consciousness source origin expanding region where the region is expanded. I mean, the consciousness expands and merges into the sea. That is the place called Shambhala. 
it is not any specific name where you can uh, find it uh, uh, in some uh, uh, map or something like that it is not that it is it is a coded uh, meaning which means delta region. someone will be born in a delta region so he will be doing this kind of thing where he will bring down the uh, supramental force and link to himself and that's why he is called as kalki and he will fi fight the hostile forces so on a warrior warrior means uh, uh, with a force that is with in collaboration that is with mother and uh, shri arvind will fight together and then uh, uh, bring down the supramental uh, force onto the earth bay of bengal is in, uh, to read here uh, consciousness force expanding region bay of bengal is the largest bay in the world which is as a delta uh, form shri arvind was born in calcutta which is on the bank of hugli river of um, uh, tributary of ganges uh, this i have mentioned the source of consciousness conclusion in the last slide considering the sadhana of shri arvind to bring down the divine life upon earth so considering the sadhana of shri arvind bringing the divine life upon earth so this is what is the sadhana of shri arvind a new race of the future by fighting the hostile forces and linking the supramental force linking the word kalki is the linking the supramental force to the earth by transforming his body linking within uh, for the evolution of human consciousness to the next level man to superman the dashavatara is a similar narration of the evolution if this is what shri arvind sadhana the next paragraph is what dashavatara as per vedantic concept the dashavatara is a similar narration of the evolution of consciousness from which kalki fights and saves the mankind from pralaya and brings a new life of truth the names decoded to philology corroborates that shri arvind is the kalki avatar so this is what i had to say so thank you very much yeah. the one question is like as you say we need to or probably you need to explain us the meeting the other session How have you arrived at the meaning of some words? For example, you say you are taking in Canada, and in the, whether for all the alphabets of Canada you have those right at the beginning. So, what is the source of it? Source, of course. Uh... Uh, there is no source, source in the sense my own uh, permutation combination to intuitively whatever I have written. That is the only source. But uh, I can uh, give you the entire explanation of the whole thing. Like uh, uh, so, we can uh, uh, the entire uh, dictionary, whatever is the. So I have created the. So we we okay. Discuss it. Yeah. So if that, that is possible, I mean that should not be an issue. No, see what what I mean to say is when you have done such a this is a research what has been done, it should be validated. Yeah. Then you say that uh, you don't have a source for those letters. See, this is the entire. Uh, yeah. Say all this is the writing. Each alphabet has got a meaning. So, so now, each of this will have the. Can we instead of going through the names, uh, if you take let us say some, then if this is applicable to all the names, existing names whose characters and everything are known to us. Yes. If we can derive for those names with this one, yeah, and then probably we can be validated. Uh, uh, validation can happen. Correct. And then it becomes a proper research. Correct. So if you say, uh, see here, I'll just explain two things, which where I have, uh, uh, as you said, use the word dharma, the real word dharma, and sanatana. So we understand sanatana as uh, as something there which doesn't have uh, <laughs> eternal or birth and death, unknown or whatever, forever kind of a thing. and dharma also we understand a particular uh, uh, this thing sanatana means sa means life force consciousness sa sa the alphabet sa na is all energies 
that is a bigger na not the regular na it's a, just a na will be a conduit na will be all energies ta means receiving ta sanatha na na means that is sanatana in that you have a general na it's a conduit or a channel as i mentioned so what it reads is channel receiving all energies life force consciousness so sanatana dharma means now if you have to read uh, sanatana it's a channel receiving all energies life force consciousness see this dharma is the one which receives all energies and life force as a channel sanatana dharma dharma means balance dha means balance ar means radiation ma means consciousness force so what it means balancing radiation and consciousness force they as i said dharma is a balance i mentioned earlier here it is dharma the very word dharma is showing balance i did not put any the the very word the is balance balancing radiations of consciousness force so when there is a consciousness force it has to be balanced or else what will happen is it's like a tug of war it will be moving and nothing consciousness will not evolve so that to keep that in a state of balance is dharma or else it will become adharma once one side is pulled asuras become stronger it is pulled on to the and the entire will collapse and then pralaya will happen so this has to be in a state of balance that is what is dharma the very word dharma is also showing balancing radiation and consciousness force so if you say sanatana dharma as a whole a channel receiving all energies of life force consciousness and balancing radius radiations of consciousness force this is sanatana dharma so this you can substitute everywhere and anywhere and we will get the exact the true meaning the hidden meaning which which is a very very subtle that's what sri arbindo says in the the origin of aryan speech that there is a hidden meaning which is actually the law of language or speech that has to be decoded once that is decoded the entire vedas everything can be really understood clearly is what sri arbindo has written in the